Good evening, I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting on August 20th, 703, here in the town hall offices. The agenda for tonight is uh, we'll see if there's any minutes for previous meetings, uh, review the mail, have any public comment, and then, at, uh, and then we're going to open a public hearing. And the hearing is on a site plan review submitted by SWCA. Find out what that means. On behalf of Hexagon Energy LLC for development of a solar facility along the straight uh, set right road on properties owned by Chester Johnson. Then we'll look at any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to posting this meeting. We'll send it to the next meeting and we'll call the adjourn. Any board members have anything else to add or take away? No. Uh, this is a second meeting during this month, and the minutes aren't, aren't ready yet for the, uh, the meeting we had two weeks ago. So we'll review with them at the next meeting. We should look at um, some mail we have received. About, um, about the uh, related to the public hearing about the Dollar General, proposed Dollar General store. I'm not going to talk about that tonight, so I will make sure everybody sees them. So now we, uh, just before we open the public hearing, is any, uh, if anybody has any public comments about things that are not on the agenda tonight, um, if we can just take two or three minutes so that we don't have to wait for the next meeting, we can, we can do that now. Does anybody have anything important that's not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to the public hearing. So I'd like to um, read the legal notice that was in the paper twice and was sent out to uh, butters of this project. Uh, Town of Deerfield Mass Planning Board Notice of Public Hearing. The Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on August 20th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Deerfield Municipal Offices in Conway Street, pursuant to sections 5400 and 2200 of Deerfield Zoning Bylaws to review plans, including site plan, stormwater, and special permit submitted by SWCA Environmental Consultants on behalf of Hexagon Energy LLC for development of a property along Set Right Road, Assessors Map 142, lots 20 and 22, for a 2.0 mega, megawatt AC, or 2.62 megawatt DC, solar array on properties currently owned and farmed by Chester, Chester Kuchowski. Copies of the site plan and applications are available for review at town offices during regular business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. Uh, posted by the Deerfield Planning Board on August 6th and August 13th in our uh, 
local newspaper, uh, the reporter, as well as sent out to a butters, and I have um, returned the seats so registered mail. So that was most of the So let me just read the uh, site plan and new application. Uh, the name of the applicant is Old Frontier Solar 3 LLC. Um, mailing address for them is in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, property owner, as we said, uh, Chester Nachosowski. Nachosowski, sorry. Um, 194 Conway Road, South Deerfield. The description is on behalf of Old Frontier Solar. Uh, SWCA Environmental Consultants has, been pre has prepared the site plan review and special permit application for two megawatts AC solar energy facility to be installed on lots 20 and 22 of Setback Road. As the project will be 2.5. Megawatts AC and constructed on 9.95 acres of land. The proposed the project is classified as a large scale brown mounted solar energy system. And accordingly, we have um, in our bylaws, we have uh, special bylaws whoa, for, that, uh, for that type of project. So, what we normally do is get the um, we've got lots of plans and things to read here, but if the applicant and proponents could give us an overview, introduce yourself, give us an overview of the project, then we can uh, see what the public has to say and then we can move, move forward on this. So I, I guess I, I understand the site plan review is what we're here and uh, special permit and for solar, the planning board is the site plan review, uh, the, the special permit and authority, so we can do that at the same time. Okay. Um, and is there a, a stormwater? Yes. But I'm also here. Yes. So we do that at the same time. All right. So Great. the team want to introduce themselves and show you? Sure. Uh, uh, before I say that, we have a quorum. Um, the planning board, uh, Matt, Paul, Kip, John, Rachel are here, five and seven, so we have a quorum. Great. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Scott Reamer. I uh, am here with my coworker Daniel Bolka and uh, Kevin McCaffrey from SWCA Environmental Consultants. Uh, Daniel and I are with Hexagon Energy. We're a uh, nationally active renewable energy developer based out of Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, we've done nearly a thousand megawatts of, of different varied energy projects across the country with over 20 years plus experience. But that said, we're a small team that, uh, that really prides ourselves in being able to work with communities and townships to help uh, develop clean, uh, resilient communities as we're moving forward. And so we're, we're really excited. Massachusetts has a, it's a national leader in renewable energy specifically, and they have a new program called the SMART program being launched here imminently. Nobody knows the exact date. Uh, it's a little bit mysterious, but we're all working as best we can with that date. Um, and that is how this project would be, would be developed underneath that. We would sell the power directly to uh, uh, Eversource right here. Uh, the project is two megawatts AC. That's enough. It will produce on a yearly basis enough to power approximately 300 homes. Um, we are working with, uh, with Mr. Ostrowski on some property that's set back just west of Highway 91, um, trying to make sure that it's, it's out of the way and, um, you know, it, it will have a lifespan of approximately 20 to 30 years, somewhere in there. During that time, no concrete will be poured. Um, at the end of the project's lifespan, everything will be pulled out and the land will go back to uh, agricultural production. So we, we don't see this as a permanent development by any means. This is something that, that temporarily provides power in this area. and. Uh, in the future, we'll see exactly what happens here. Um, like I said, really excited to be here and talking about this. Thank you for hearing us. I'm going to hand the uh, project over to Kevin to give you guys a little bit more of a detailed overview of what it is. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, so I just want to talk for a few minutes about you know the actual the actual product. That's fine. I can I can stand up and go over it. Um, I, I can hold it. You want me to hold it? Okay. I actually mostly for the people in the audience who are. Yeah. 
We have one. So Scott mentioned the, the project's off Set Right Road. Uh, it's currently agricultural use, uh, row crops. Uh, it's relatively flat. Uh, we did do wetland delineations early on, and there were some off to the, the east and southeast. Uh, we cited the project to be well outside the buffers of those and have been in front of conservation and have the, the RDA signed off on. So that's all negative determination. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so access to the project would be through uh, through the existing set right road. Um, as you come up around the corner, it uh, it does sort of tail off into a dirt road. So it'd be a small section there where we we did uh, improve that with some gravel. Um, one thing I want to kind of get out for discussion this evening is the project is proposed on two discrete parcels both owned by Ostrowski. Uh, so one question we have is on the, the property line setback. And if that's going to apply here, if it is going to apply, then uh, maybe we need to take a different route and, and do a subdivision. So I guess it's something for discussion this evening. Um, as John mentioned, the, the total size is just under the 10 acre threshold. Uh, for this zoning, we can't exceed that. It's uh, and the extra large scale is not allowed in this zone. Uh, so that, that's basically where we've capped it. Um, in contrast to the, the project that went in at the quarry, which was what I would call a fixed ground mount, uh, these are a little bit newer technology. It's a, a tracking system. So they're still on pilings, but they do uh, rotate through the day slightly to track the sun. This time there's no battery storage proposed. So it's on grid, it's on two total. Yes, sir, correct. Uh, so just as I mentioned, uh, improve this short section here with gravel on the existing right of way. And then the access into the site will be um, on an existing farm road alignment. So there's a there's a uh, you know a road base there. Uh, it's pretty competent, so we'll improve that with some more gravel. Um, and then uh, really all we have is the driveway. Uh, there's one equipment pad for the, the transformer equipment, uh, then the array, and then there'll be a, a chain link fence around the entire perimeter. Uh, normally we set that about six inches off the ground to let uh, small animals get through there if they need to. Um, I, I do have updated plans with me tonight. We, we did make one change since the submittal. Initially, the, the interconnection wire is running out along this common property line. And then from there, it was going to need to be buried because existing utilities on set right are buried. Uh, they made an agreement with the adjacent property owner to run overhead down here and out and then interconnect at that corner. So that saves the, the trenching all along the set right right away. Uh, and just it just made it a you know more cost effective simpler approach so i I have two sets of plans if you need more, just let me know I can get more to you um, and so you can see the wetlands on this over on the east uh, and the in the buffer that's a hundred foot buffer, so we're well outside that uh, there will be erosion control set around the the entire perimeter of the work area with a, a double uh, barrier along those sides that have the wetlands, just to, to make sure. Yeah, right, right here, that's the delineated line, and then that's the 100 foot buffer. There's also a little pocket down here that you don't really see, uh, well off the property. Um, really won't be much grading for this project. Uh, it's, it's basically going to be add existing grade, uh, harvest the vegetation in there, and then um, 
but put down a, a quick seed to get things stabilized, get the project in, and then put in the permanent seed as things are wrapping up. Um, I don't want to get committed to it, but construction is probably you know a few a few months, uh, three three to five months, something like that at the most. The stormwater, can you just say, you say where the inverters and things are going to point out? Sure, so um, these will be string inverters. Mm -hmm. So the actual inverters will be mounted on the, on the array racks, mm -hmm. you know, periodically. Then those all feed into this equipment pad, which will have the transformer. Mm -hmm. And then that'll get it to, to AC and out into the wire. Um, Just to talk about stormwater for a minute, um, since this is a row crop and we're going to convert it to a what I would call a meadow condition, uh, that's, that's what we spec on all these jobs is a, a pollinator mix uh, that really has a deep root system and only mow it maybe once or twice a year and we, and we, we spec it so it, it gets about to the bottom edge of the panels so it gets pretty thick in there. Um, but the point being from my standpoint for drainage is that's that's basically my stormwater management system. Um, so we're going to take a row crop that's, that's sort of half open with soil and convert that into a deep, uh, deep rooted meadow. And flow rates are predicted to decrease when you make those assumptions, uh, even with adding a new gravel road. Um, so I, I'd say that's the overview. Uh, Happy to get into, into details as you need them. I have one other intro explanation, and that is around the name of the project, why it's called Old Frontier 3. Um, when, when we name and cite projects, we try to find something that is relevant to the township. And back in the 17th century, Deerfield was one of the, the primary frontier areas of, uh, of the settlement of the area. And we thought it was kind of cool to be able to uh, just work in, in this area with uh, serving as the frontier land there, but hearkening back to your history here in the township. So just in case you wonder why it's called Old Frontier 3. Also the high school. I guess a, the buffer would be here. The question is, why don't why don't you make them one, one parcel? Because can if, if need be. I mean, yeah. we get people coming for A and R's all the time. Well, you just take away a lot line. I yeah, that, my, that, my problem that with that is that if, if you if eventually you sell one parcel, then you've got a problem. Um, but on the other hand, I've seen places that have they have parcel A, parcel B in there. You know, on the same same owner. You know what I mean? But then to have this one project go between. Yeah, and, and the other thing to throw in there is that this will be subject to a lease boundary. You know, so the project, the area will be defined with a, you know, a new boundary that's under a lease for the term of the project. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that could have stipulations on yeah. sale of the underlying property. Mm -hmm. So the, the lease will follow the property? It's yeah, and see, we're the, we're the planning board, so we don't get involved in leases as much as we do in zoning. And that's, that's, so I, I just want to double check. I, it certainly doesn't make sense to have setbacks if it's all one it, kind of property. It, but I want to make sure they're looking down the road. That we yeah, I, I mean, I think we can, we, can, uh, we can deal with it either way. I think yeah. we just need to know which direction we need to take okay. it. So, an A&R an is you a know, simple an enough process. The property line seems to be the cleanest. Yeah, you could do that. Mm -hmm. And that would be Chet Ostrowski to do that, right? Yeah. All right. I mean, that's 150 bucks to do that. <laughs> and, and then I don't think there'd be any. You know, and it's done. And it's just. It's done. That's what it is on all. Yeah. All, all, yeah. Mm 
All right, any questions? Comments from planning board members, or should I open it up first? And yeah, it seems pretty straightforward to me. Mm -hmm. So this is a time when, um, you know, abiders or any residents, anybody has any uh, questions, concerns, um, comments? We'd love to hear from you. And if, um, again, we want to ask people to sign in. Can I just ask one question, too? And the remainder of the product, project, is that will be, a, sorry, the, the rest of the, the property, what is the, I mean, this it's kind of in, in the side in the middle. What is the plan there? It'll remain in agricultural production. It'll keep being farmed. Okay. Anything outside the fence. Outside the fence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do we need to get John to bring a microphone out for the public? We can, we yeah. can spread over here. And yeah, why don't we make this one, yeah, that'd be great. Make that one available to the local over here. Yes, sir. You want to? Well, just so I, I could have said this at the beginning, so public hearings are, we hear from the applicant and then the public can address the planning board, actually. And um, normally, it's sort of up to our discretion. We can have a conversation with the applicants, but sometimes you need to keep it more under control. That's all. So, but we, what we do need, because both because it's on TV and it's being recorded, that you need to come up to the microphone. Do we have to have a sign-in sheet for today? Yeah, we have a sign-in sheet here. And if you, you just tell us, just tell us your name and then you can... Yeah. <laughs> All right, so my name is David Decision. I'm a, a butter at 33 Set Right Road in South Deerfield. David, a couple of questions. I'm sorry? Decision. Decision. Okay. So a couple of questions I have. First of all, they, they talked about uh, in their application um, a, a vegetative buffer zone uh, that would uh, face uh, Set Right Road. And, uh, uh, but the, it, was, it lacked any specificity about what type of vegetation buffer zone and how that's going to impact the sight line to the people that uh, not only currently live on Set Right Road, but the land across the street that abuts this property um, is also buildable lots that have perked. Uh, so they're in agricultural restriction right now, but they can be taken out and turned into commercial lots. That type of project uh, with that sight line would have an impact on the value of those lots, which would then impact all of my neighbors that currently reside on that road as well. So I want to know what type of vegetative buffer zone that uh, you are contemplating, number one, and number two, how that buffer zone is going to be adequate given the topography of the land because of the slope that goes down the hill. That land that's across the street that abuts to the west is flat and then probably dips down between 15 and 20 feet uh, minimum uh, before. So to me, if these site uh, these panels are going to be 10 to 12 feet off the ground uh, and then sitting uh, with a view of property that's 10 to 25 feet higher. I, I'd like to know what type of uh, vegetative buffer zone that's going to adequately uh, cover up those panels so I don't have to look at these things. So you want to know about the... I want to know, the, the yeah, I want to know what the vegetative buffer right. zone is and, and how it's going to accomplish what they said in their application uh, that it's going to provide a barrier. I, I don't care if I see the fence. Uh, I don't want to see the panels. And that's going to require a fairly significant buffer. I'm thinking it's something between 15 and 30 feet uh, to cover up those panels and to cover up that fence. Yeah. So I guess it's two questions here. So how, how far back are these from Set Right Road, and then what will be in between? Just for just to help us kind of think about this a little, how how big is the whole property? How many acres is the whole property? Do you know? Forty. Two parcels combined, they're just under fifty. And this is a nine and point nine and almost ten acre of solar panel. And then what's between the road and, and the panels? It's just field. Agricultural field. 
So do you know what's going to be there? Or? I can tell you what's been there, traditionally. Uh, occasionally, uh, uh, silage corn, but more, most recently it's been cabbage. It's been uh, sweet corn. It's been uh, crops that, are, that, are, uh, that don't generate any height at all. Uh, so we're not looking at, uh, for two or three months out of the season, having a, a large uh, agricultural crop that's going to be growing, that's going to, to cover the view. And even if it did, it wouldn't do so for any substantial length of time. Yeah. And, so and it's, it's a clear view. I mean, uh, he wants to say that it's 800 to 1,000 feet. That may be so. This is a view. It's a, it's a, it's a scenic view that goes across the field, down the hill, with uh, the 91 trees, uh, Mount Toby, uh, North Sugarloaf, Sugarloaf, and, uh, and uh, the range of the Pecumtuck Range. Uh, and now you're going to have this monstrosity sitting there with these panels that's going to impact the view, uh, impact the value of the property, and impact the abutters having to look out at that uh, during, I mean, this isn't the south where we're going to have greenery all around all year long. This is going to be something, the fall's going to come in, the foliage is going to be gone, and these things are going to be sticking out there. Uh, they required, I think, through the zoning bylaws to have some type of vegetative buffer zone. I'm just looking at what is going to be an adequate vegetation buffer zone if this project is approved. Yeah. So we, I think we do have the buffer zones and everything. I'm, I'm not sure we talk about height and everything, but that's... No, it doesn't say anything about height. Yeah. But, uh, but it does say in their application, I believe, that they would put up a vegetative barrier that would yeah. have something to do with blocking the fence and the view from Set Right Road. So, again, so what's the height of the... Um, of the panels, they're, they're how many feet off the ground, and then what's their tallest point? Six to eight foot. Off the ground. Mm -hmm. And then how, how high did they, at their, at their steepest point? Eight, eight foot would be the, the highest that it gets. They're not, they're not particularly high. That's not what the application says. Wait, wait, they start six feet off, and then they go another eight feet? Because they're a tracking system, yeah, yeah. They, they may rotate up to a, approximately eight foot. Eight feet above the six feet? No, above the ground total. The top, the top of the panel would only be eight feet above the ground. Yeah, they're not, they're not very tall. They're not very tall. And then the fence would be six and a half to seven feet off grade. And typically we would, you know, pay to have a vegetative screening put in around mm -hmm. the fence line of evergreens yeah. that would mm -hmm. block the um, visual obstruction. And we would just request some guidance from the planning board in terms of what, what a standard um, uh, vegetated buffer would be for, for this area, and I believe we specify that in the permit application uh, that we'd like to have that conversation. Yeah, I think I think the stances were willing to do it, and we just would like this discussion to help define it a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but I guess that we just need to know well, as, as you mentioned, the slopes, and then um, just you know what is what is the highest point of the panel? So I'm, I'm not getting a how, so how big is the panel? Um, Together, it's about a three foot by six foot panel. Oh, okay. It's two or three feet off the ground. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's just single panels. So there will be two panels, one on each side of the of the the bar, and then uh, the bar will sit about. You know, it depends exactly on how it lays, but probably about three four foot off the ground, and then rotate up to six to eight foot, depending on where it's at. It, it's. Eight foot would be pretty high. It's not. Now, which way does it rotate? I'm just curious. Uh, so if, if the sun, you know, north to south, running this yep. way, it'll rotate east to west throughout the day. So it's it's so tracking it's just, the sun. It's just one morning. axis. It's rotating. It's just a single axis Where tracker. Where might we see a? Okay, so you're encountering skepticism here because the the panels that are coming into my mind are much taller, especially yeah. the rotating panels that I've seen before. So. So you're laying the panel side sideways or or up and down? Um. Thirty nine inches high, each side of the center. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. They have a slight tip. Do you have any yeah. pictures of them? Yeah. So, so I, I can pull some up here. Yes, sir. And um, you're not in the nowhere in the plans here. No. I don't believe we included any. Yeah, there. we should we should certainly get pictures of what these panels sure. look like, and especially yeah. that they're rotating. And then, so it's probably during the winter when they're the kind of steepest slant, right? Angle. And that's when there's let very little <laughs> corn or anything, you know. So, so I guess the other question is the, the application says 10 to 12 feet in it. And um, so um, I, I don't know if that impacts the accuracy of their application or not, but I think in the, in the application it did say 10 to 12 feet high. Um, and now, um, I, I, although I, I may have missed it, uh, how, how are these panels rotate, um, especially where the houses are to the west? If these panels are rotating, and following the sun, as the sun sets, are we going to have uh, any type of residual feedback or glare or reflection from, from these panels? I don't know much about the reflective nature of, of these uh, up close and personal. 
Uh, but that would be a, a, a very large concern as the, these fall of the sun that uh, toward the end of the day uh, that they are now reflecting somehow toward, uh, um, uh, toward the, the residences that are, are abutting that, uh, the, the, uh, this, this project. So that would, that would be something to clarify for all of us just with, sure. the, on, with these, I mean, panels have changed over the years. So what is kind of what goes on with these? Yeah, for sure. So the, the panels are now manufactured to, to be anti-glare. So there's, there's not going to be any residual glare as the, as the panels track the sun. So that, that's not a worry at all. Um, but again, from a, a, a visual obstruction standpoint, we are happy to talk with the board about um, putting in a vegetative screening evergreen trees so that it's, you know, it, it's not impacted by the seasons. Yeah. Uh, they they, built, they place these things around airports commonly, uh, and you know the, the fear of a glare would be a significant concern if these did reflect. But they're designed to absorb the sun rather than reflect it, um, so glare is not a particular issue with these. It's not efficiency. Right, glare would be an inefficient system. And the um, and is that the only side that that the, there would be an issue? Does does anybody anybody in the public have issues with the other sides? Um, we're talking the west side is set right road, right? So I don't know what the uh, what the other three sides. If you need to do it all the way around there. To the east, it's the it's 91. It's to the north, it's uh, a, even a greater distance before you hit any abutters and farmland off a plain road. I'm not sure if there's anybody here that can speak to that, but. Uh. So I mean that'd be you know that'd be great if you did. Yeah, the, so, the and, south is pretty wooded once you hit that property line. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're happy to include a vegetative buffer. And so I guess that would be just the calculation of what's the highest point of the panel okay. and, mm -hmm. and then have a matching you know, evergreen or something. And um, how far off, away from the panels is the fence? 10 to 12 feet. So then the trees would be in front of that? Mm -hmm. On the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fence was how high? Fence was how high? Six, six. Usually I'm at seven, seven. with a six no, inch gap. Good. Sure. It's a six and a half foot fence feet foot to the top. off the ground. Sheet four or sheet three. Okay. What page is that on? It's a sheet three of the app. Yes. All right, David, do you have any other questions? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, with regards to the, the issue of the setback, I don't know that the board had answered that. Uh, the, the, in the presentation, they talked about uh, an issue with setback. Uh, and again, I think that that setback issue may come as, as related to the parcel of land that's across the street from my home. And I think that uh, both they and, and we'd like to know what the board's intention is with regards to that setback and, and what, what impact it would have on their design or, um, or your dis determination as to what to do with the, the setback issue, which I, I'm not quite sure if it's not enough setback or uh, uh, what it is, but they did mention a What's, setback what issue. What setback are you talking about? From the property line to the, the, the start of the, uh, I think there's a 100-foot zone yeah. or something in accordance with the, uh, with the bylaws that says that you, uh, I'm not sure if, somebody mentioned something about a setback, that there's, there's an issue. And yeah, so I think we, let's, let's re-explain the yeah, setback. Yeah, I'll just yeah. summarize again. So that there's two parcels, mm -hmm. both owned by Ostrowski, and according to the rules, you have to have a a setback around the whole preliminary parcel. So that means there's a setback right there. Oh, okay. Both sides. It, it would be okay. internal to the So, so that would, if you, by yeah. eliminating that, uh, if, that, that right. uh, property yeah. line, you would eliminate that if issue. Yeah, if okay. that's an effect, we have right. a, a gap there. Okay, then that makes sense. But your setbacks right. around the, the outside of the whole system is, is more than 100. Yes. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. We've maintained yeah. that, yes. Mm -hmm. And are you, um, I guess at this point in time, being unfamiliar with, with your work, you are the granting authority for the special permit, so you'd like to hear comments with regards to the, s the Section 5300 and, and the conditions there? Absolutely. All right. Yeah, so we've, we've so all uh, bear with me for a second. I'll be quick and let my neighbors uh, uh, go on from, from here. But um, uh, a few years ago, um, this, uh, this community did a couple of... Uh, uh, of votes and a couple of uh, uh, a master plan that, that sent some edicts from the citizens. And, and one of the edicts was in the master plan that one of the nature and character that they wanted to preserve in this community was the rural nature and character, the agricultural character and the commitment to the, to the farming community. That was done through the survey to the town citizens and also, uh, I think, a non-binding referendum that we were a farm-friendly community. Uh, this project is anything but. Uh, I think what the board really needs to consider 
uh, in this is the domino effect it could have. You have properties that have been uh, taken advantage of the 61A agricultural restri restriction to provide tax relief, but also to promote the use of agricultural land and continuing with what has become a, a known farming community. Um, if we are, especially in residential areas, going to now allow this type of project to be placed in residential, what kind of domino effect is this going to have on other hundreds and hundreds of acres in this town that had the same type of agricultural restriction? Uh, we were now, we would become, uh, a, uh, every time somebody has an advantage of a lease, the incentive would be there to, to do this. Uh, and I'm all for people, uh, you know, making, uh, making a buck off their land. That's what they pay taxes for. But at the same time, too, we have to ask, is this the, sl uh, the slippery slope we want to, uh, to engage in? Uh, we become, instead of a farming community, we'll become a solar community. And I, as, as wonderful as this uh, sustainable energy is, they're ugly. Uh, they're hideous to look at. Uh, they are uh, uh, big metal monstrosities that have a, a, a blue tinge to them that is completely unnatural to the rural character and community, not only of this town, but of our neighborhood. Uh, so um, I think that when we look at what this town has asked its uh, boards and its governing members to look at, we have to start with that philosophy. Farm-friendly, rural community. And let's try to maintain that as best we can. Uh, in going to the specifics that uh, the board is required to look at, um, 5321 social, economic, and community needs which, uh, which are served by this project, um, all I see in their application is the usual solar mantra that they're going to have a, a benefit, that they're going to have a, uh, uh, to meet the community needs uh, uh, for a, a sustainable and renewable energy. That's just a solar mantra. It has nothing to do with specifically addressing the needs of this community. How does this project impact the citizens of Deerfield. Um, and it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, uh, electricity that's placed on the grid, that's sold, and that's redistributed by, uh, um, uh, by the electrical utility company. So it doesn't impact or help Deerfield in any way, shape, or form. You might get a, a bump up in the, uh, in re the release of the ag uh, agricultural restrictions uh, for it becoming a fully taxed piece of property. But again, that's the slippery slope. That's a short-term benefit for the town over the course of 15 or 20 or 20 to 30 years, uh, but a slippery slope with regards to other projects that may follow this of similar nature. Um, so the economic, uh, I'd say that in this particular case, based upon their application and the minimal amount of information that's there, that the mantra shouldn't be enough for this board to rely upon approving the special uh, um, zoning permit with that uh, limited amount of information that's in there. Um, I think the best, uh, the, the next one is uh, certainly the neighborhood character and social structures. This has been, uh, through my life and through Mr. Ostrowski's life, his father's uh, farm, farmland, this has been nothing but farmland forever. Uh, it is in a neighborhood that has uh, some homes. Uh, it has uh, uh, been an agricultural area. And to, again, dump these types of uh, panels in that area um, is, uh, is, is disconcerting. Again, locally for us, but also, too, for um, the way forward of the town and how these projects can pop up in, in a residential or near residential areas. Um, in a long-term impact, it would impact the town, the, the economic viability of the town, the desirability of, of properties uh, in and around of these, these uh, uh, solar farms. Um, and I think it would be detrimental in a long run uh, to the community as a whole. Um, I also think that when you look specifically at this land, that the vegetative buffer zone that they're, con they're going to have to come up to try to block that is going to be astronomically expensive given that they're going to put in uh, trees that are probably going to have to be somewhere in the area of 30 feet high minimally to obstruct the view as it goes across and east to the uh, east end of this property. Um, uh, we're not interested in putting in uh, three foot hemlocks and watching them grow over the next 20 years. Uh, that's not something that's going to impact uh, the visibility of this project from the street and from our homes. Um, So I, I asked the board to really look at uh, the, um, uh, their application simply states that they are uh, maintaining the agricultural integrity by placing these in, in an agricultural zone. And certainly they don't impact necessarily the current use of the, those properties, uh, but it's not agricultural. I mean, they'd be harvesting sun for energy, but it certainly does not fit the character and nature of the remaining hundreds of acres that are out there that have been farmed continuously and productively for decades. Um, they also cite uh, 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 the impacts on the natural environment. 
5325, uh, again, they, they rely upon the fact that they're plunking these things down in the middle of an agricultural land, that they're going to plant some, some uh, you know, wildflowers, they're going to grow two feet high, and all is going to be well with the world. These things are, are not going to uh, fit in with the nature and character. Of the, uh, and while there may not be any runoff issues or issues with wetlands, uh, the impact to the natural environment is it's going to make it ugly. It's going to decrease the value of the properties that are currently there, that have building sites that, are, that can be built on, and the homes that currently re are in that area, their resale value and the tax base to the town. Um, they also cited in their, uh, uh, in their uh, uh, justification uh, under the requirements uh, that um, uh, 5326, uh, the potential fiscal impact and again, I would suggest to the board that the, uh, the, the impact of, of perhaps some increased tax revenue in the, in the uh, short term uh, is a slippery slope that would uh, cause uh, uh, everybody to pause and think about uh, what we want in the future with regards to these types of projects in residential or near residential communities. Uh, they also talked about the, um, uh, the, the, the uh, employment in the area. You just heard from the, uh, the, the developers themselves that uh, these are going to be uh, um, jobs that uh, uh, are, uh, or, or they're going to be requiring t construction for a few months. So they're, they're, they cite in their application that there are uh, uh, potentially some employment uh, to the town. If anything, it's short-term employment, uh, much like seasonal employment, and it really doesn't have any impact on the town itself. Yeah. Um, so uh, in, in conclusion, I, I would suggest that uh, you know, we, we have to, or you have to, determine uh, whether or not, uh, in light of uh, um, everything that's gone on, that the, whether the detrimental impact of this project um, is, is going to be outweighed by the benefits. And I would clearly suggest, based upon their written application and their responses to these, uh, um, these criteria, that they have minimally complied with the application process and have not adequately met their burden in doing so and asked the board to deny the special permit. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Yep, come on up. I just want to say your name and yep. sign in there. Good evening. My name is Stephen Taylor. I'm here and representing my mother in law, Joan Kozakowski, that borders this uh, project on three sides. Um, we have just a few questions about um, the zoning. Will the zoning stay ag res for this parcel? So it's under the threshold to be changed to commercial or industrial. I was, I didn't know if there's a no project doesn't change the doesn't change the it underlying zoning. Okay, no. yeah. didn't know that they were going to change it. Um, and just you know, just so everybody knows that in um, residential ag, we have the zoning bylaws that you know we all voted on as a town. Um, so this is large scale ground mounted solar, and it's it's allowed in all parts of. Deerfield by a special permit. Um, it's allowed by right in industrial, but it, but it is allowed in residential, center village, commercial one, two, PI, EPD by special permit. So, yeah. okay, up, and, and, and that means it can be large scale means up to ten um, acres and two megawatts. So okay, this is so they're this right, is on they're, the exactly they're right the, under the ten acres right and there, the yeah. two megawatts. And I think they said the setback will be, the fence will be 100 feet from the property line, from any property lines? Yeah, the, the, the fence has to be. Because yeah, uh, we border the on the north and east and then north again. Mm -hmm. So that was just a question. And there will be no impact on stormwater runoff is what you're saying. Okay. And the rest of my questions were answered earlier. So. Do you have any concerns about the, the visual aspect of it? Or? Um, not this moment. Um, no, yeah. it's just. I mean, no, knowing few, that they talk about it being. We don't. It's, it's agricultural land that we own, yeah. so it's not residential. All right. I don't have any. It doesn't impact me. Your crops don't mind looking at it. Do you access it by the same road? No. We access it off a of plain road. That's our frontage is off a of plain road, so it's not off of there. All right, good. Have you guys spoken, or have you nope, spoken to nope. your neighbor about? Because you can always do that anytime nope. you have questions too. But um, no, we just yeah, just here for a few questions. Right. We're not opposed to the project. Right. It's Mr. Ostrowski's land. We feel that he can do what he wants with it as long as he is in by the town bylaws. Yeah. 
All right, thanks very much. Right, thank you. Could you did, did you sign in yes, there? Just, uh, thanks. Any other comments? Good evening. Uh, Tony Martino, I live at 39 Set Right Road. Uh, how's this power get to the grid? Mm. You guys can answer that one? Sure. How does the power get to the grid? <clears throat> uh, so it'll be you know, collected within the array. Uh, everything inside the panel area will be underground. It'll come out to the equipment path here and go to overhead wiring. It'll run south, and there's going to be a small easement on this adjacent property. And it'll tie into an existing pole out of the corner that's owned by the utility. Okay. Overhead lines? Yeah, from, yeah, that, from here. Oh. Okay. So that's also going to be a visual impact. And so you said that's you're getting an easement from the neighbor? Yes. For that? Which I don't does that fall under zoning? I don't think it does. So because the original plan, if the neighbor didn't give the easement, I think from my understanding is the original plan was that it would have to go underground along set right. Mm -hmm. But now this is this is a different option that they're... Yeah, the, the existing utilities along set right are buried from the corner north. Mm. Uh, so it's still going to go overhead along this line and they go underground. Yeah. So now you go overhead the other way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How, how think, high are these lines? Standard power pole lines, the same height as what you'll see. Okay, so you're going to have a huge power line out in the middle of the field now. Yeah, and I, and I think one of the, the advantages of that is for the agriculture. Mm -hmm. You're not dealing with a trenched-in line out in the middle of the field somewhere. You, can, you know where the line is. It's on a pole. You can see it. How many around. poles will be out there? Less than 15. Both. 15? Yeah, 150 foot spacing. So, so seven, like seven this way and then seven that way, or 15 yeah, one way? 15 total. All right. And how big is the, are the wires? Just, just your normal three wiring. Phase, right? Normal it's three phase wiring you see on the side of the road. Same yeah. as what runs along um, Conway Road. Connect to those lines. Just a single, a single wire? It'll be a three phase three wire. Three phase line, yeah. Yeah. From from Conway Road, it'll run up Set Right Road. There's a single phase wire there currently, that will be upgraded to a three phase line. Right. Do you have any diagrams or photos of that? Uh, I can. Um, That'd be helpful. Include some, for sure. Right. Uh. <laughs> what was your name, sir? Tony Martino. So just getting back to what Mr. Decision said, I mean that's another huge impact on that whole area and the view. I mean, now you're going to have 15 power poles with the power lines going right in the middle of everything. And we're not going to buffer that, correct? We're not going to put anything around there? That's correct. Yeah. You have a suggestion or? Underground. Oh, okay. Everything else is buried in that area. Yeah. On people's property, or on the on the, the town the town road, I guess is buried. Correct. But uh, yes. on, on people's properties, it's also all buried. Yes. Mm. That's interesting. All right. Okay. Uh, nothing else to add, except what uh, Mr. Decision said. Pretty much speaks for. Uh, I can't be as eloquent as that, but he said it all. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, can you? No, I'm sorry. I'm just with your view. Oh, okay. You guys should drive by and see what Well, we, we normally do check these out. Um, but, well, we want to hear from you. You're the one that lives there. You know, so. I don't believe the power lines were in the proposal. Well, as you said, there was one, the one coming across the property, but then they were buried. So now, now there's going to be, instead of one above ground, there's, there's kind of two above ground. Um, so when you, when, you, when you say the trenching, your, your first plan, 
was to go over above ground? It was, yeah, it was still overhead through the ag field, yes. And, and then buried. So that, along the road, that trench doesn't affect agriculture. Right, and the thinking there was that it was already buried. So it's just going to go underground as well. Would the line be buried from your transformer to the set right road? Conceivably, yeah. Yeah. The plan right now is not to, but they, they, they could, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, could, that could be done. That's not, not a particularly difficult thing to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, I think if, especially the, the line that's running from the transformer then runs parallel to the south mm -hmm. border, I mean, if that's a concern, a visual concern, we could look into burying the line that runs mm -hmm. across the ag field. It just, yeah. um, as Kevin alluded to, it could create issues for Well, if you buried land. the thing four feet deep, nobody's going to plow that deep. So, and it would get out of, you know, that would be one concern of the, abutters that you wouldn't see it. Yeah. And, that, and that's a different property there too, right? That's not, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you need a, do you need an easement or are you, are we, you we have far the, enough we, away? We have the easement uh, agreement already. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. You mean to, it's not a different property line to the, from the transformer to the, to the road. Right. Well, it looks like it's almost on the line. Is it? It's not. So this is within a Strauss's parcel. Yeah. And then the easement we're talking about is yeah. just over the south side of that line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so that's something to consider is to just bury it from the transformer out to the road and then yeah, and, and, and part, road. Of the, part of the driver there is this is not owned by you know, the, the project owner, right. the landowner. And then that combined with this existing buried line here, that's sort of how that came about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think if you stuck to your original plan and just buried that line going up from the transformer onto the street and then keep the one buried along the street, that seems like it, it, it wouldn't affect the project at all. Yeah. Well, we won't, we won't be accessing any buried piece of the line as it exists. There's, a, there's an above ground spot where we're tying in along that road. road. Sure. So we'd, we'd pop above ground. I, I think it would be very reasonable for us and, and easy to work with to uh, bury the line across the agricultural field um, in, in any space that there could be a view shed there. I don't think that would be too difficult. And to the one going with. from the field out to the street? We could do yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't believe that that would be that, as much of a visual obstruction, but I mean, we could consider it. It just, it does add cost to, a, to the project to, to bury the lines. And, well, I'm hearing that it would, I'm, I'm hearing people would notice it, and if there's no other wires above ground in that neighborhood, then it seems silly to add some. That's, yeah. that's it's above answer. ground where it connects along that neighborhood, along that right road, but I think we can, we can work with you to, uh, to, to just, bury it. Just so you understand, this, at this corner here is where the above ground corners lie. This is set right road, and then it turns this way and goes all the way up. And this is where their pad is approximately. So they're, what they're saying is that they were going to run poles over here, then connect them. If they go underground, then it would be underground all the way to the corner. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. that makes sense, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. They get rid of one issue. Yeah. 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 And, and as I think he alluded to, you can't hide wires. You know, you can. Yeah. You can yeah. kind of hide the fence a little, but you can't hide wires. So well, that sounds good. How much of that parcel, the one that you were just alluding to, is in protected? Is that in David? mentioned that is uh, in chap APR. Chapter 61? Yeah. It's not in APR. It, it is in Chapter 61. 61. We have okay. met with the select board already, and they, they agreed not to exercise their right of first refusal okay. um, to, to allow the project to go forward. Okay. So d just to clarify, you know, that is a, um, the town, when a landowner takes is that it? When a landowner yeah. takes out of 61, out of chapter 61. 61A, they, to offer to town they have to offer it to the town. Right. We already did that. And that's when the town <clears throat> can say, you know, yeah, no, we don't like this project, we're going to take up the offer. So that didn't happen in this case. I'd also, if I may make a comment yep. quickly, 
Um, in the, make sure you're going sure, there, Mike. Sorry. Yeah. The, um, the idea of this not being of benefit to the community, there, there is a very real financial benefit uh, in this. We will be negotiating a pilot agreement that stands for payment in lieu of taxes mm -hmm. um, with the township. And we will be discussing those numbers directly. We don't know the exact amount yet, but it will be somewhere on the order of, of what happened with the other solar project, which is about almost $11,000 per megawatt DC per year to the township. So, you know, conceivably, we'll be talking about uh, almost $30,000 a year to the township through this for, for no strain on the, uh, the town's resources whatsoever. Um, this will be something that, that will generate it, revenue for the township. And also, in terms of an agricultural nature, it, it's not producing crops in the same way, but the plants that are, are laid down underneath it are designed specifically to be pollinator friendly, to, uh, to foster bees and small uh, fauna. And, with the goal of then the rest of the agriculture around the area uh, thriving and prospering e even more. So we are trying to use um, you know multiple levels here to address many many different things. I, I mentioned resilient community. I, I think this would be a, a great way to not just produce power that does get used locally. Yes, it is pumped onto the grid, but that is those electrons will be used by the houses <laughs> right there. Um, foster the environmental benefit through through these pollinator mixes and. Um, pay a not, in, not significant amount of uh, income to the township each year. Um. So that reminded me in the last project where the, the, uh, the generator had to find people to buy it and they, I think they were selling it to Amherst and then they also offered it to Deerfield. Mm -hmm. Is that something you can do too? Um, yeah, I, I can speak to that. There's, so Yes, through the SMART program, there is the option to um, make this a community solar project. We are in talks with aggregators, so we, there would be a third party that would essentially aggregate demand from the community. Um, that's not set in stone, though, for this project yet, but it's something that we could consider. Yeah, and and is, are considering. Is the, would the price to the town be lower if we... If we it, it's set by, it, it'll be set by the SMART program. That, so we're, we're just working with the, the guidelines put out by the state in terms of all of the different rates that are, that are posted, so. Have any projects been finished has, under the SMART program? It hasn't launched. It, it yeah. launches in, um, it, well, anywhere from late September to the end of the year, nobody, nobody really knows. So we're, we're trying to get our, our permits in order so that we can apply underneath it. And, Time is an important factor in this because the uh, as the program fills up, the incentives decline and, and become less attractive as, as pieces go. Have you done other projects in Massachusetts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've, we've done some with Boston Scientific primarily, um, and we have several others that are in a similar stage to this this level in this project, but none under the SMART program yet because it, it hasn't launched right. yet. Questions, concerns? Yep. Todd Burns, 31 Severate Road. Um, so just a couple of follow-ups. So just on the wires, I just want to hit that again and make sure I understand. Are we in agreement, are we saying that that should be under wire and we're not considering above ground? If so, I don't have any questions on it, but if oh. we're not saying that, I have more questions. <laughs> so, so you would prefer they be buried? I would prefer they be buried. I'd like to understand how many wires we're talking about. We talked about 15 poles. Is that 15 additional poles with the new look? And we have poles that were already in the plan, so there's more than 15 poles in the total project. Um, you know, I'm so, assuming it's not one little wire, so just how yeah. many? So let's just say this. So it's, I don't know how to say this, but it would make it easier for us to approve a special Ooh. permit. I'm not saying we will, but it would make it easier if they were buried. So can we just say sure. they're going to be buried? Sure. From the transformer to the, to the pole. That can be, if that can be a condition yeah. of, the, of the special permit, we, we can work with that. All right. Great. <laughs> Run or roll. Uh, Leading into the, so the transformer, uh, heard a lot of talk about it, but no specifics. Yeah. Uh, how big is it? Does it sit on a construction pad? What is, what's the deal? Yeah, it's on a, it's on a small concrete pad, a couple hundred square feet, it'll be in an enclosure. Um, we could dig up the specific sound rating if you wanted it, but 
normally uh, 10 to 20 feet away from them, you don't even hear them. So uh, and certainly, I certainly a thousand feet away, you're not going to hear anything. I believe it's 60 decibels. Yeah. And how big is it? It's 200 square feet. How tall? Six, seven feet tall. I mean, it depends on the, the vendor, but okay. not much taller than. than and that's going to be inside the fence. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, sound would obviously be a concern. Yeah. They can. It, it, it can't be detected okay. yeah. outside of there. Yeah. Properties. They're they're constructed so as not to be specific. And another benefit, it shuts off at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, well nights, there you go. <laughs> um, that was a big. That was a concern at that one. That huge one up there. And the neighbors yeah. turn the lights on. Does that no. yeah. <laughs> Um. So let's see. Um. Construction, so three to five months, but we don't have a hard date, so we don't really know how long. What's the construction traffic going to be like, and how do we control the comings and goings? Uh, so this site doesn't need any uh, real land clearing. Or, you know, there's no trees to cut or anything like that. So that initial phase of land clearing will be pretty quiet. Um, a few loads of you know, excavators in there, and then first thing would be to get the erosion control in and then the gravel road, so dump trucks with gravel. Um, once the access is in, you'll have a delivery of all the racking, so that'll kind of come in a wave over, you know, probably within a week, most of that stuff will show up on flatbeds. I'll get that all in, and then you'll get another wave of all the panels and the wiring and that kind of thing. So we're going to have flatbed trailer trucks driving down set right road? Yes. Have you guys been on set right road? How many? Uh, how many are you talking? I don't really want to guess, um, but that that did play into my comments about improving that last section of the dirt road there, because that obviously turns into just you know dirt farm road. I'm not concerned about the dirt road. I'm concerned about when you drive by my house with a flatbed trailer truck. I mean that's a sharp corner. There's kids on it. How are you going to control that? Well, it is a public road, correct? It is. So you're not going to control it. You don't. You don't have so, concern about control. So all these vehicles are licensed to be on public roads. Okay. Okay. So by, by they don't. Laws, so. so we have no concern about construction vehicles on these roads for three to five months. Well, what I'm hearing is not they, they come and they deliver things. It's not they're not going to be up and down the road every day, are they? They, they come yeah, in. They, after that, it's going to be you know laborers' vehicles, passenger cars, pickup trucks. But you're accessing it. I don't understand. I thought you were accessing it by this this dirt road down the side. So you're not actually cutting across mm -hmm. set road, right? No, so that again. How are you going to? How are you accessing the, the work site then? Yeah. Take the turn on set right, go north. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Right. Set right. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Hmm. I just don't. Oh, I don't see that access right, right there. Right here. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. That goes along that north property. So how long will we have the gravel trucks coming? How long does that take? I would think they could get that in in a week, honestly. With the quarry right around the corner, I don't think that would take very long. Okay. And, I, I, you know, if it's a public safety issue, then we'd get the Deerfield police and see if, if it's so many trucks are coming in one day that's it's a safety issue then we got to get the police involved and that would be paid for by the you know the applicant of course okay. mm -hmm. but that's i think at this point a little beyond this that's that's more if the neighbors see it a problem okay notify the, the police but one one thing we do sometimes is we uh, agree to a condition that says as construction is drawing closer and we have some of these logistics figured out we can sit down with the Fire department, the police department, mm -hmm. whoever you think is, is yeah. appropriate. Figure out if we need flaggers, signage, yeah. any of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, work hours. Yeah, that's. I mean, we have, we have work hours in town, right? And then if we need to, if it's. Yeah, we also we've also on projects had the name of who to call if there's any. Mm -hmm. Right, I remember we, that should be mm -hmm. posted at the main yes. sign yeah. of the, yeah. the yeah. entrance yeah. of the project. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
Thanks. So, oh, am I done? No. no. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were, <laughs> you have others? I didn't know if I was excused. No. <laughs> um, so, so we talked about, uh, you know, what the impact is going to be to views and everything else. I can tell you when people come to the house, one of the first things they say is leave that view. With this here, I'm incredibly concerned that they're not going to say that. Consistent with that is, I would assume, part of what my home value is based on is that view and how you look. So when my property value drops, am I going to get some sort of abatement for that? Or how does, how does that get taken into account? Because I think we need to consider sort of what Dave talked about before is what's the overall impact of this? So you're adding some tax revenue. Potentially, I heard payment in lieu of taxes, so maybe you aren't adding tax revenue. But you're adding some tax revenue. You're going to also lose some tax revenue when your property values start to drop. Um, so I think that needs to be something to consider. Um, and then also the, so I'd like to hear more about payment in lieu of taxes, mm -hmm. um, how that works. It, so, so I don't understand a lot of things. So in lieu of taxes tells me you're not going to pay taxes, you're going to give us money instead. <laughs> but I thought you were going to give us taxes. <laughs> Well, Why not just pay the taxes? So, I don't understand. Well, there is a, there is some tax on property. Yeah. So if the, if the value of this property, if the equipment on this property goes up, we the town can tax it. Right. Right. Um, sometimes it's hard to know what that is. I think, and so then the town often come up with agreements that just set a, have a set amount. So I'm not sure. Do we call it even payment in lieu of taxes? Or yes. That's what we, did. Yeah. That's what we call it. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit ambiguous with these, whether they should be counted as, as real property or personal property. Uh -huh. And so the state, in order to, to kind of negate that confusion, uh, has issued a, a guideline and a mandate of payment in lieu of taxes instead of directly paying taxes. This is how we handle whether it counts as real or personal, is just sort of a sidestep it and pay the town taxes. So it will be directly with the, the assessors. Um, and the and same as if property taxes were assessed, but it's just uh, unclear what the exact mechanism from the state would be. So this is how the state has decided to, uh, to handle it. And they call it a pilot. It's an industry standard term. And that's with the assessors or with the select board? The, the assessors. It'll be the assessors and the select board that we talk to both. One more thing. Yep. So, um, so I heard you know, as far as what they've done in Massachusetts, I heard, uh, I think I heard something that was more of a industrial application, but what have you done or what's been done by this company in Massachusetts in this type of setting or somewhere else? Can we see examples of, yeah. you know, these things with how they're covered? Um, but where has this been successful and how has it benefited the community? Yeah, that's a sure. good question. We're happy to provide a, uh, unfortunately I just forgot to print it, but a, a statement of qualifications that, that shows the projects that we've, we've worked on and, and developed. And the, the list is quite substantial. And, uh, but have you done any in a, in a neighborhood like this? We have in Connecticut. So we moved into Massachusetts to begin pursuing this project specifically um, for the SMART program. We, we were not involved in the SREC program. So this is our first foray into um, this type of project in Massachusetts. We did work on industrial scale projects previously, uh, as I mentioned, with Boston Scientific. Um, but this will be our first uh, underneath the SMART program. Again, that was just because we, we moved into the area based on seeing the program um, and working with it. But happy to provide um, either an email or hard copy uh, our statements of qualification so you can know that our expertise in this and we've done this. And um, maybe a, a similar project in yeah. Connecticut, that's not yeah. so far. We, we're, we'd yeah. be interested in the, having so. some sense of how that looks mm -hmm. and worked in, in another setting. Yeah, and I don't know if it helps, but I'm, I'm out of Amherst and I've been doing probably 90, 95% of my work in solar for four years. Uh, did the job up at the quarry with these guys a few years ago. And, uh, it's pretty much all I do. And I kind of sit in the seat of facilitating what the developer wants to do fitting it in with your roles and the, the site resources and just trying to come to a place where everybody's comfortable with it. So, so the, I mean, we see these around a lot. Do you, know, do, you, do you know of some around here that aren't done by this company but that are in a place that has houses that look at them? Because that's, that is a question, the property values. I'm not sure there's scientific yeah. data that says property values go up or down. But uh, it's, it's hard to find good literature on that topic that's really 
conclusive and, and reliable. Um, we did do a couple down by Hampshire College that aren't strictly residential, but it's a pretty busy, busy area with some high visibility. Uh, and if that's something you're in interested in, we could find a few more and give you some locations Does to drive by. Hampshire College one? I know where that a couple of do they have tilt? I don't. No, those are so those are fixed those uh, yeah. north of Atkins Market there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that actually brings up the other question about noise. Does the tracking create noise? No. 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 I mean, yeah, nothing above ambient noise. Yeah. 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 The only one I've ever seen that's tracking one was. Yeah, I mean, they move so slowly. Because they're tracking the, the azimuth, so they move so slowly that I mean, it's, you can't hear it. So, so I think, you know, again, this is your, um, so we did the big, the big one up in the industrial area, and that was an industrial area, so it was different. So this is really the first large scale in, in a residential agriculture and deer field. So we do want to, it'd be good for us to get a lot of information on this. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think your, your point is well taken. That would, you know, you're seeing, we're seeing them more everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and we have these bylaws, so we sort of want to know what, what the possibilities are here. Um, I, I'm, I was surprised that they're not any higher, that, may, you know, that they're only eight feet tall. Um, again, it depends on where you, where you're sitting, I don't know whether you see it or not, but if he doesn't, I thought Yours they were. Really big. I don't know, the right. ones up on the core here, much taller. On Keats Road. Um, they keep a low profile with the, tra with the tracker. Mm. Uh, able to. So I guess I have a, so I have a couple things. So that's, that's a big one is get some, if so if you could um, give us some examples mm -hmm. and, and even, uh, you know, either we could call around to those towns or, or Solicit you guys to make some phone calls, even mm -hmm. if I find out if there's any anything about sort of property values and things like that. Um, to, if I may, the, we have had studies done um, for other projects where neighbors were concerned about their property values and that um, the, the impact of property values is found to be negligible. U using match pair analysis, so yeah. looking for houses that sell similar, uh, similar houses that sell and find, found that the values are negligible, the differences in them. So we can, we can send that. Yeah, we can have that information. Yeah. And then I guess I'd like more information about the, uh, well, the storm, storm water and the plantings, what you're planting. I know I'm not qualified to make a judgment on that, um, and also, also you mentioned spec sheets on the panels, right? Yes. Did we need them? That's right. You're so you're, you're listing things on. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm now just adding that one thing on okay, there, and you're right. just saying it. So. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Todd. Spec spec sheets on the panels and um, you know, photo photos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Really tell us. Well, I think spec sheets should should have right. everything, mm -hmm. size, mm -hmm. mounting. Mounting way, ways of mounting them and mm -hmm. orientation and mm -hmm. all that. And um, so I guess I'm, I want to ask the board about a uh, some kind of peer review for the That's stormwater and and the, the plantings. It, it, it doesn't seem like a huge big major it sounds thing. Sounds like a lid type of program. It doesn't right. sound like a regular uh, you know regular stormwater. You know what I mean? Right. Doesn't, no, doesn't there's no. You, doesn't it to you sound like a lid program rather than a? There's no catchment basins or anything. It's just. Uh, Grounds from capturing the water up to now, is that what you're saying? And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically a before and after analysis. Yeah. Uh, so you've got a row crop out there now that's in reality not fully vegetated. You know, there's dirt rows in between the plants, uh, and it's not the deepest root system. Well, we did, we did, some, we did some stuff with um, Debbie, I uh, forget her last name, Trevor. who did at lid type programs. Uh, low impact what, development. Low impact developments where they set up a garden. And that garden was the storm water. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's exactly related to so that. It's a, it's a native vegetation that once it really sets up, it, you know, it gets a real deep root right, system. Right, but there's, a, there's, there's the ability to, to describe how you would do that and, and to justify the storm water by lid projects. And it sounds like that's what you're headed for, but that's, I'm not sure. That's what it is, yeah. So my question to the board is, can we just review that ourselves or do we want to maybe hire someone to, have to look at it quickly? 
Well, they've been plowing and harrowing this thing every year for eons, and now they're going to plant it and it's going to stay in grass. So I think that's an improvement. So it's going to decrease any water flow. Decrease problem. water flow. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's going to take the water off. You're going to stop plowing and harrowing it, so you're going to improve things. And, and the, the length of these panels is six feet at the most, so... Yeah, it's a three foot by six foot panel, and there will be two of them mounted on the on the tracker bar. And actually, if they're tracking, they're not going to dump water in the exact same place all day long. Mm -hmm. They'll actually distribute the water, right? So it's even right. Well, it's only going to track in one axis, so it's not going to it's not going to distribute it around all the way around it. It's just going to distribute from here back to here yeah. as it rotates, as I understand, yeah. right? Al along one axis, yeah. So. You know, beginning of the day, it'll face east as the sun comes up and then track. So if it rains at noon, it'll run across evenly. If it rains at 4 p.m., it'll run to the, the west side. And yeah. if it rains at yeah. so 10 a.m., it's the east. It's just in one axis only. But it's, but it's less runoff than, like, yeah. those, it's fixed ones up there. Right. Each road, so. Huh. All right, so, um, so I just want to finish that question, and then I'll get right back to you. So, um. They won't be out there cultivating the headlands. Right. You know, on the end of all the rows, they turn it into dirt. And the type of <laughs> vegetation, you've got that listed, so we can just... I know yeah, it's, it's on the detail sheet, uh, the whole seed mix. Yeah. And, if, and if the ground is not cultivated, then you're not having dust blow into your house. Yeah. I know I don't get That's, that mm. on Circle of Street. It's yeah. when, they're, when they're plowing and it's not in... in in you know vegetation and it's uh, the dust is blown into your house, so it sounds like a positive net pasture. Can you talk a little bit about? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So no, go ahead. All right. We just wanted to finish that one. So yeah. in the comment, um, just you know, Tony Martino. Yeah. Is that right? right. Um, getting back to the uh, Martino. Martino. Mm -hmm. Martino. Okay. Yep. I'm sorry. I, That's I right. couldn't hear you saying it. So Martino. Okay. There you go. Um, getting back to the dust, uh, we're going to put a gravel road in. I, I heard that part. Um, how are we going to keep the dust down, though? Because how many, how many truck trips are we talking? Uh, a lot of trucks, pretty standard. If we, I mean, that'd be part of the erosion control inspections. So if we hit a dry period and uh, we're not dealing with rainfall, but we're dealing with dry conditions of dust, we can just water it. Okay. M multiple times a day, if needed. And how many truck trips total? I can't say, sir. Uh, but it, 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 you're talking during the construction period, yeah. right? Because yeah. after I mean, that, we, there's no... After that, there's none, right? Yeah. Just, Correct. Just the construction. Yeah. During the construction. Yeah, once, I mean, once, 100, the, 100 once trucks, the project's in place, you're going to get no more dust. 500 right. trucks, 1,000 well, well, trucks. What we talked about earlier was um, if this goes forward, yeah. then prior to any construction, we would get a whole schedule and that would then tell us more accurately how many trucks, what days, what hours, and if it's during a... I'm just trying to get a rough, a rough number. I mean, yeah. how many panels we, how many panels do we have? Well, we can come up with an estimate before we see you again, just based on okay. I'm doing, the materials well, how, that are going to need to show up to the site. I'm just, I'm just wondering how, why that matters. I, don't I mean, I'm curious but too, but it's... Okay. 100 trucks, 10,000 trucks, <laughs> somewhere in the middle. Just wondering, that's all. We can come up with an estimate for the next meeting. All right. I mean, you should have a pretty... I think I mean, they don't want to give a yeah. wildly wrong I'm not, not going to guess. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, be wrong. All right, so number of trucks. Number, number of trucks. Of truck trips. Um, so getting back to the water, what do you do other than plant? Because right in your area there, when it rains heavy, there's a river that runs through there, small stream. What's your question, Tony? I'm, I'm just curious how that affects the, uh, the construction. And, and well, I mean, that would that'd be water. monitored during construction, you know, until the vegetation yeah. sets up, make sure that it's stable. That's part of the, the EPA's uh, you know, SWIP program. That's a requirement. Uh, so we'll be out there once a week, and then after every uh, significant rainstorm. And if things are moving around, we'll take measures to keep it in place until the vegetation sets okay. up. There's, there's, a, what would, I mean, measures? Because you had originally said that this is going to be non-permanent, and in 20 years we're going to take this out. So, it measures would be drainage, 
If so, where would it drain? No, it'd be, Things like it'd that. Be temporary stabilization, mulching, tracking with equipment to keep things in place. So to keep it on the property. Right. During construction. Yeah. But once it's in there, it's, it's just automatically takes care of it, right? Right. Once that's all grown in, you won't need to do anything. Um, you may want to go look out there right now <laughs> as to how this land changes when it rains very heavily. If it's not vegetated now, you're going to have a big mess. With this, it'll be vegetated, so there won't be any. You won't have any of that mess. Mm -hmm. Does it flow to the, these are wetlands to the east? Does it flow there? You're assuming that there's not going to be any flow from the neighboring properties. That's what he's saying, that this goes from the other side of Plain Road across the Plain Road and then down through uh, the fields south mm -hmm. toward this parcel and sits out there when it gets very wet. It's I mean, you, you can see where it crosses Plain Road as you drive uh, down the gully before you get to the, uh, the end of uh, uh, Sand Gully Road. Uh, it's a washout every, every spring and after every, every storm. If I can just put the map here. Yeah, because right. there, so, the, there, there is the wetlands there to the east. So you got this here, so right, there's a barn somewhere. I'm guessing right about here. Mm -hmm. because, Right about here on the east side of the barn, all the water from the north side comes right through here and disperses down to the swamp area, the swamp over here, and then some of it across 116 into the little stream. So I guess my question is, once that water starts washing everything away, You've made an yeah, assumption, sorry, you've made, you've made an you initial assumption that it's going to wash things away, and I, I don't necessarily agree with you. So, so what, are, what is the farm? What, are the, what is the farm crop there? That's now the right now. There's there's uh, potatoes, mostly some uh, corn, cabbage. What is the what is that washed into the, the crop? There? It just it, it makes a channel, like it's a small out like a small stream, yeah. It's, they were out there today with a payloader fixing the road so they can harvest the potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a swimming pool at one end of Set, uh, set Right Road. They, they went out there, one of the farmers went out there and, and dug literally a 20 foot deep swimming pool. And so full, it's full of water. So, <laughs> so one of our so all that water comes down, and, and I guess, <laughs> yeah, my concern would be. Can it wash over these these solar panels, and, and then at some point, do we need to make more construction out of there to divert the water? Well, maybe you have to do that now too. It sounds like it's terrible. I mean, well, it's, like it's, currently, it must be. There's, but there's no that. structures out there. Right, but these are not habitat structures. They're just there's there's. No, sand. but if if it affects them, then that. There's going to be more construction down the road. I mean, one of our things we definitely want to talk about, the talk about is that it's, no water can leave this site onto someone else's site. Um, right. Well, it can't, get, it can't get worse than it is now. And, and that's we're trying to say that right. these plantings make it actually seem like it'll be better in the future. Um, okay. Right. The plantings out there now are not helping. So. Right, right. That's, the, the water, that's the water. That's the cultural nature of our yeah. area. I mean, that is what right. it's like silage. Yeah, I'm just trying else. to point out one of the problems with the, with the site. Right, but the, the, the issue here that we deal with is that we don't want water that's generated on this site to go elsewhere. Right. But because there's 300 acres to the north of this and all the water comes down because it's low, it naturally goes through that swamp area. If it passes through these people's land, that's, we can't control that. We just want to make sure right. that the panels or anything that they do there doesn't okay. cause and an issue. My and question is, are they going to need to do more improvements in the future if this becomes a problem? But, so I'm just trying to get that question right. answered before, just so everybody knows that okay. there is an issue out there with water. Right. And it's, mm -hmm. it's obvious if you go out there and look. Mm -hmm. You can see right where it goes. All right. So I guess that's a good so that's a warning to you guys. Yeah, yeah. You're going to figure that out. We're concerned. Can we talk a little bit about the? Uh, uh, sorry, I have another question about the decommissioning. The. How Are you? Uh, is Tony I'm sorry. all set? No, yeah, I'm, I'll sit here and listen, and I'll ask my next question. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. 
Hold on. I took notes the, uh, the fancy way here. Um, the acronym. Well, there was you, you said something about time being the essence to get into a certain program. Smart. What? Why is that important? Is, is it? Basically, the um, as the bit there's it's it's a called an adjustable block program, and there's just a certain amount of capacity in each block. And as you move from block to block, the tariff that is paid by the utility gets lower, and so the economic viability of the project okay. gets so slimmer. if the utility is not subsidizing this project, it doesn't it doesn't work. No, that's not. The utility will be purchasing it based okay. on the, the so state's program. Somebody subsidizes the state subsidizes it. This the state's the one who put it out, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What does SMART stand for? Solar Massachusetts Renewable Target. I didn't come Is up that, with that. I think was that kind of what you were looking for? Was yeah. what that SMART stood for? Yeah. 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 So it's a Massachusetts program. Yeah. And it's also the federal program. Yeah. Um, it's underneath the Department of Energy Resources, uh, DOER. And they're finalizing the various pieces of it right now. And I mean, I you know, so. th this is the state wants to get more uh, renewable energy, so this right. is why there's incentives for it, right? Okay. And I think I think in theory it means that there's no coal or, or gas or oil charging okay. you know, plants to to make this energy, so it's replacing it. I think that that's what I understood it to be, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a shame to use a beautiful area. I mean, a quarry is one thing, and I would be interested to see other projects in an area like this, if we could come up with it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. We, we have yeah. profiles, especially yeah. of a project in Connecticut. What's, what size somewhere? plant would that be done on, like, by the Sunder School, Sunderland Elementary School on 116? Are you familiar with that? What mm -hmm. size project is that? I don't know how big it is. I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, that's only yeah. a couple acres probably. I don't think that's a I didn't think, yeah, large. probably not very big. There's another one on 116 uh, near the Amherst Town line as well. That's a pretty good size. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, there's one down there at Fairview Farms and Waitley. The, the, most of the farms now are, are putting them on their property. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how big they are, but it seems like we're seeing a lot of them coming up. Yeah. Okay, thank All you. All right, thank you. And I, I just remind people, the, uh, the the big one up in the quarry was not actually in the quarry. It was, they, they knocked down a lot of, they cut down a lot of trees, actually. <laughs> um, and so there's, there are trade-offs to all these. Something else was there before solar panels came. Hi, Stephen Taylor. Um, quick question. You guys said you're going to gravel the road. Which, what are we talking about? From Set Right Road past Mr. Ostrowski's barn to the project? Or are we talking from the end of Blacktop to Mr. Ostrowski's road? Because that would be a town road that's in pretty poor shape. It's a farm road. Yeah, we felt like it starts to deteriorate pretty bad here. Well, after the last house, it turns to a seasonal farm road. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so that, that was the main section to focus on, and then yep. the access in to the project. Okay. And you, you think yeah, I, no, no, the Blacktop, I was just concerned about from the last house to the Mr. Ostrowski's land where the road would go down. Yeah. It's a farm road and it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not made for big trucks, only for like seasonal farm use. And when you were asked about like truck traffic, obviously you've done some homework. You know how much gravel you're gonna bring in and how much these panels and structures take up on a truck. So you pretty much know how many trucks are gonna go across this. Yeah, I, I think we committed to putting together an estimate of all that. Yeah. I mean, you must know already. I mean, no, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be here tonight if you know how much gravel you're bringing in. That that's a few steps down the process, really. I mean, we need to to get through the permitting and, and then the construction logistics really kick in. So you haven't done any homework to see if it's feasible for you to do this. I mean, well, yeah, you're going to bring, know, you're bring ten feasible. loads of gravel in, or you're going to bring two hundred loads of gravel in. I mean, it's a big big difference. So to answer your initial question, I know it's feasible, or, or else we wouldn't be here. Okay, I mean, you must have an idea. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so we're going to find that out. Okay. We're, that's all we can tell you. 
I'm just, I just these, read these I, residents I, were asking a question. It doesn't or, pertain to me. I don't live here okay. on the street. So we're not in we, so we, we're, we're it. Seemed, uh, it just seemed that they were, <laughs> weren't getting the answer they okay. wanted, and somebody would know that I'm going to do a project. It's going to cost X amount. There's going to be X amount of materials going to be used. Okay. Thank you. This isn't the end of it. I know. I we've asked questions. We've been, uh, we've been told we're going to get responses. Okay. That's... So I think and I just as a taxpayer, I just want to know that road. That's why I want to know if it was going to be maintained because yeah. after the construction process and a lot of heavy traffic, you know, it was, it was the highway department now going to have to go out there and maintain it. And the next thing is wintertime. That, the snow plowing stops at the blacktop. And the town doesn't maintain the road only in the on season for the farmers. Is this company going to plow out to their spot? I don't know if they have to go out there or not during the winter months. Uh, so s snow removal is not, we would not remove snow unless there needed to be emergency access to the site. So you would take care of plowing the town road to your access road? If, if there would, if there's emergency. Okay, I just didn't, I didn't know if now you're going to ask well, the town to plow the additional quarter mile in to, yeah, yeah, no, no. to the site. No. So those are the kind of things. So also part of this, um, both the site plan and the special permit, we get we check with all the town offices. Yep. And so we're going to check with the DPW. We're going to check with fire and. Exactly. So they said there's less impact for taxes than you know per se having homes and sending kids to schools and ambulances and police and such. So uh, that was my only question: is what the snow removal. No, but I think that brings up the emergency access because I think for the one up on the quarry, we actually said there was an emergency road out the other side that had to be maintained. So that's a good okay. A good question is how do you maintain those, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Because once, once it's set up and running, you don't have much reason to go in and out, but you still, you still do need to have access yeah. to it. Yeah, exactly. And I think the fire... Yeah. Yeah. About once a month, someone would access the site once a month yeah. and as needed to uh, perform routine maintenance. And, and then whether this would have to be accessible to emergency trucks, uh, just fire trucks all year long, and that's something we're going to talk about too. The, the disconnect will be down at the corner. On where they go into the pole? Yeah. The main uh, so it's transformer. Oh, down at this? Down at the corner is set right. Down oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's where it goes from the, the private developer's equipment to the utilities equipment. Mm -hmm. So at that point, there's a shutoff. Mm -hmm that's accessible by the fire department, by the utility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Any other comments? Sorry. Sorry. One Back again. All right. I'll be, I'll be brief. Two questions. One, that was a great point about the road. So just following up on that. So they're going to go out a couple times during the month, uh, during the winter. Um, be really interested to know how they're going to get there because there's about a seven or eight foot blockage before you can get out onto the road from where the town stops plowing. So before they come back, I'd love to see the answer to how they're going to get there, especially if there's some sort of issue with the transformer because you're not walking, you're not driving. Unless you got a snowmobile, you're not getting out there. The other question I have is pretty simple and straightforward. <clears throat> if this special permit is approved, what exactly is the benefit to the town? I haven't heard that. Um, you, beyond the power that's generated and used, there, there's the pilot agreement that gets used or paid to the town. So, you so, know. So, so um, I'd be on the power. How does that benefit me? Uh, there's a lot of money that comes to the township directly through the project, uh, through what's called the payment in lieu of taxes, um, which, which is significant in terms of the, the amount of income it generates passively with, without any direct, uh, maintenance or, or running by the town, um, also allows the town to, the power used in the town offsets carbon footprints and, and helps create a, a cleaner environment. It, so when do we understand what that payment of lieu of taxes looks like? To give you an example, the current um, solar array that's in there generates around $68,000 a year to the town. And um, it also, we purchase about 8% of, uh, about 15% of our power at an 8% discount of our already discounted rates. So those are some of the benefits to the community. Who, I'm sorry, who, who gets the 8% discount? 
The town does. The town does. The town. We purchase energy through a third party, but it comes from there. We, I'm not sure how it works, but that's we get a discounted rate on that. Do the people that have to look at the panels get a discounted rate? Do the, excuse me? Do people who have to look at the panels get a discounted rate? Uh, actually, the town's entering into another agreement with another company, and we're, I forget what it's called, where everybody in town has an opportunity. Uh, the, the way that's going to go, and I want to get home. Well, is that the community solar you're talking about? Yeah, community solar, solar that we're, yeah. we're, yeah. we're going to be involved with, and, and all the residents are actually automatically signed up. You have to choose to opt out of the program. But if you do stay in it, then you would get a discount. I don't know what that discount would be at this point. But there's other aspects, like they say, we get credits as, as a green community in the town would be, um, we could benefit by other grant monies as well. We get different kinds of uh, grants to, uh, you know, buy LED lights. Uh, on the streets. Oh, in anything. our buildings as well, but we're currently uh, applying for grants to replace a lot of our street lights with LEDs. That could, just, you know, save this town, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars a year. Just, just that's just. I, I know when they changed some lights in front of my house, all of a sudden, the light was on the street. It wasn't in my bedroom window. So, uh, those LEDs seem to not only save money, but. They also are so focused and so directed that uh, we we just currently I believe it's through the Green Communities uh, Act that we received I think one hundred ninety thousand dollars to replace the inefficient boilers at the elementary school and one at the uh, at Frontier as well. So just so you know, I think I think part of our job in a special permit is to take all these things into consideration, and it's hard to match up exactly you know. Who pays and who benefits? Right. Yep. Um, when when the town passed this bylaw that said we'll allow large scale in, extra large scale in, I think the town has an energy committee. I think they were in favor of it. There's, I mean, there's a lot of people who are in favor of solar and renewable energy. And then it, and then it gets into the, the view thing. I know it's it's hard. Um, so well, I think we're talking about how to mitigate things, um, burying the lines, putting up shrubs, uh, you know, bushes. I mean, all these things are going to be helpful. Yep, I, I appreciate all that. Uh, just on top of all that, there's just a lot of vague, there's a lot of ambiguity in statements, so it would be great when I come back to hear some more yeah. detail because it, it sounds like for people that are applying for a permit, they don't have a whole lot of the details yet, so that would be great to see. You've, you got a, did you get a, did you look at there? I mean, they did do. Well, they can't answer questions tonight. They, but they so. did answer a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're going to get back. To, now right. they're going to get back. So to I, I agree. Some It'll be that's nice all. when they come back and yeah. they give some answers that's, to questions. That's why we have that weren't answered. That's why we have these meetings, and if we need multiple meetings. We'll do that. So, okay. Yeah. And you know, when you talk about in a hurry, we're not in a hurry. Okay. The town's not in a hurry. We we want to get the answers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't we don't try to go slow either. Just. So I. I would actually make a recommendation that we continue the public hearing and get some more information. Sure. I want to make sure that we have all of our questions and do we need any other uh, third party information, I guess is my other question. Oh, I still want to talk about decommissioning. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yep. 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 I want to talk about the, um, the, you know, an escrow account that yeah. helps set that up. Yeah, so we would um, we'd prefer like a surety bond, which is, mm -hmm. I don't know, you're not familiar, it's basically an insurance product where we pay a premium each year and if we if the town would need to access those funds then they can access those funds. I think when we talked about the other projects that the panels and stuff are worth money at the yeah, end of their lifetime. Exactly. So that there's an there's a there's a built in salvage value salvage value yeah. there at the end. Correct, yeah. And I believe the estimate that SWCA put together does not include any salvage value. So, um, and typically, what we would find is that the salvage value would be in excess of any decommissioning costs. So that helps to mitigate a lot of the risk there. Yeah. And just to be clear, you're you're renting the land yes. Yes. for this 20-year or whatever period mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really the land owner, the property owner, who's really responsible for cleaning up their land to some extent. But um, but in our agreement, we, we've agreed to, yeah. to make sure that, that everything is removed so there's no risk to 
to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ostrowski in terms yeah. of getting stuck with panels on their property. Good information. All right. Anything else? Um, so uh, ideally, um, the applicant, you'd agree to, to continue the hearing until the next meeting. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. I, 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 do you mind if I read back my notes just to make sure I've yeah, got everything? Yeah, so let's see what we all, we all might have taken notes to so make sure that we know what things we're going to be looking for next time. Yeah. You had another question? They passed them out last meeting. Did you have another question? Last okay, board okay. Board so, um, some additional literature on the technologies of the panels. There is a spec sheet included in the application, but um, happy to provide some pictures yeah. and, uh, if that's sufficient. And um, that's, you know that's the panel you're going with? There's a little bit of variability in terms of what the final panel will be, and that, that'll be finally agreed upon in the, the building uh, I, permit. I think the all thing I got from it was that maybe we would get some kind of instructions as to how they, how they function, you know, this doesn't have it? I, I don't know that it does. I didn't see it. In other words, how does the tracking work? A little out? more info on the what's, single what's axis the, tracker. What's the arc that it yeah. takes getting yeah. from east to west mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. sure. that kind of thing? Yeah, that's... Okay. Um, and then we were going to get you uh, an example of, of one of the studies we had done to, um, to show the uh, negligibility on real estate prices. So two, two separate things in a way. Yeah. Some specs on another yeah. or some details about another project uh -huh. and if you want yeah. to present mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yeah. So we'll send you a statement of qualifications that has a yeah. couple of bios of, of projects that are similar to this, especially one in, in Connecticut on a farm that we did with single access trackers, mm -hmm. um, as, as well as a list of other projects that we, we've worked on and completed. Um, so that'll, that'll be one of the things. Great. And then, um, yeah. Um, some additional detail on the vegetative screening plan. Yes. And um, would... If, if there is, a, you know, we're happy to be amenable to the, um, to the neighbors within reason. So if there's a specific plant that they have that they would mm -hmm. like to recommend, mm -hmm. you know, that would, we would mm -hmm. take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. so. now, what was that again? Vegetative what? Uh, vegetative screening. Screen. So yeah. to screen the, um, the fence line and the array from, the, from this uh, line of sight. So I'm just... The stormwater uh, plan, management plan. Is, is there anything else in the, in the box? It's not in the. Uh, it's not in the main binder here. Is there a separate report? There's two hydrology sheets. Okay. Oh, so there's just a couple of sheets in the. Uh, it summarizes all the counts. We can put a text summary together. That's in Appendix F, somewhat report. Because I didn't. I don't. I don't think there was a written report, but I think it was all on the two plan sheets. Yeah. So I mean, that's where I want to have. You know, unless you're gonna, I'd like to have someone review that. I haven't. You are. Review the stormwater management plan. I don't think any of us are. Have to it doesn't sound like they really have one as village. such, but uh, from what I what I heard, it sounded like they're using lid technologies. Right. The, that's the thing they should clarify on, is if you think that it's going to be the lid type uh, processes, tell us about that. Yeah, that, that's that, what I was and that's, we, we can summarize that in text. You know, that that has come up before with other not. people, and they actually created gardens that you know, and you're going to have one big garden from the sound of it. Mm -hmm. So. You ought to get somebody that knows about LI, lid um, type technologies and can say, okay, this is how we're going to soak up all the water and these plants are going to do, the, you know, and, and like that. And that's a, that's a science that's a still that's being used today yeah. you yeah, know, in places for stormwater control. Yeah, absolutely. So. That kind of sounds like where it, maybe you ought to be headed. I don't know. Just yeah, yeah I, I, SWA has people on staff that can... Yeah, we yeah. we, we've already yeah. completed the calculations for that, yeah. and they're okay. included, well, and good. just you know made it a little more explicit in the text how uh -huh. how that works. So, in 
Because also, also in stormwater, uh, you know, there's going to have to be some kind of requirement of what if something should come in and kill all the, the vegetation and all that, wouldn't they? I, I don't know. Isn't, isn't there supposed to be a maintenance thing with yeah. stormwater that, says, that takes into in consideration what happens? Well, the maintenance is more for the, any spillways or, or dikes or piping and stuff like that, but there, none of that exists. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, they just let it soak into the ground as it is now. But right, but what he's saying, if something went wrong with the plants, then you got to replant yeah, it. Yeah, you'd want to make sure they establish yeah. and stay healthy. And I mean, nor normally, you know, the any kind of thing, if it's, if it's like they're saying, that when they have um, drainage systems, they have to keep them clean. They mm -hmm. have to clean the manholes. They have to, you know, the, uh, the, the basins and that thing. But you're in a different ballpark there. If you're counting on just the vegetation to take care of, of all the water that's going to come in, what happens if the vegetation isn't there? Or if it, you know, something happens. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know what the maintenance should be, but that should come up, I would think, wouldn't it? Yeah, we can cover that. So in, in this, um, in, your, in your application, it's a stormwater report. It says to be submitted under, under separate cover. That's why I was looking for a separate. But you're saying there's just two sheets? Yeah, I'm not sure why that's that. So we, had, so we had all the calcs on those plan sheets. All right, so let's, let's just make sure by the next meeting it's, it's all, I, I think we have it all, but um, I'll have someone in the office go through and make sure it's all organized. All right, what else on your list? Um, and then we uh, wanted an estimate of the number of trips that uh, mm -hmm. there'll be, I guess, the number of trucks that will be passing through. Yeah, and, and given the constraints, you know, the road, just some more explanation about, you know, and then as we get further into construction, whether you are going to need police or anybody mm -hmm. escorts. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that's that's it for my notes. If you guys had and then the, jotted um, down in there, yeah. bury, bury the lines. Bury the lines. Mm -hmm. Sure. Number of trucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then how do you access the site during the winter? Okay. Sure. And then we, if you can find out what um, our fire or police would require. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then when do you think the um, discussions on the pilot will be, be happening? Uh, so we're, this week we are, we'll be right, having we'll, a conversation. We don't, I, don't, I don't anticipate a full negotiation, but... Oh, um, more information at the next? Yeah, there should be more information at least. All right, those are a lot of good things. And then the A and R to do the, the to make the one property. to make the one property. Oh yeah, right. We can, we can just do that at the next meeting. Okay, that's going to require Chet to come then, or send somebody to represent. Well, he'll be the applicant. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that'll be under the landowners. Then. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Which is all these still are actually. Yeah. Actually, oh, I'll have to just double check the administrative things with the uh, that application. And do we need to get Pat involved in, in this? Yes. So I would like her to review all the, uh, I mean, there's all the different bullet points just and she's yeah. great about yeah. making sure that we covered them all. Mm -hmm. So I, I would I'd enlist her for a few hours of this. Um, so we have a uh, sort of consultant from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments who does a lot of planning, supports us. Um, she can put together an estimate of what it would take for her to just review this, make sure we're covering everything. Sure, sure. Um, and cool. I'll send that to you in the next okay. probably week or two. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then that would also help if we need a peer review for stormwater or anything. Um, again, it's, I think we're starting to feel comfortable that it's pretty minimal. Yeah. Quite simple. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, it doesn't. That would be important to look at that. Yeah. Current situation. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, so I don't have the, uh, maybe I do have the stamped application. You guys stamped it and paid the fee and everything? Is, is it in the book here? There was a, there was an I have some signed somewhere. things, but it's not the stamped one. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, no, we have that one. Yeah, but these are stamped when they come into the town offices. That's what he's looking for is the original. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure Priscilla. I, I thought think I she, saw I think she sent it. I thought I saw them in your hand there when you read the... When you read the... Hmm. Oh, good. Okay. All right, then we have it somewhere. When you were reading that stuff, I thought I saw you had, you had all the list, all the uh, stamped things in the jar. Yeah, this is the one that the, you mean their butters and everything? No, well, no, I thought there was something else you had there. But maybe I misunderstood it. Yeah, here's the Priscilla. I mean, this is it, but it's not. Okay, no, I thought I saw something somewhere that was stamped when you were looking at it earlier, but that's okay. Right. I'm sure they've got it in the town hall. Um, can you? Sure. I think on the last, on the back of that, um, it should be the form that to continue the hearing. Oh yeah. We don't have to. Do we have to vote to continue it, John? Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping. There's a form there. Did we use them up the last time? We kept continuing those other hearings. We did get, um, all I can find right now is one, um, we get requests from comments from town boards. The police chief at, at this point said no issues um, regarding this. That's the only, only one we got back, but we'll try to get them back from all the other town offices, uh, including the uh, DPW, because there might be a road issue here too. So. There's not one on there. All right, so um, as long as we agree, we need to pick a date to continue it to. So that right now, we're scheduled to have another meeting on September 12th. And what day of the week was that again? It's Wednesday. So Wednesday. And the primary public hearing was going to be about the proposed Dollar General. Um, so the question is, do we want to do this the same night? Or no. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want to wait till after? No. <laughs> So you you think we should do it then? Or <laughs> the next week? Yeah. I, well, I mean, if we scheduled a, amount, a fixed amount of time, could we, could we go before the instead Dollar instead General? Of, and <laughs> instead of doing seven, you know what I mean? Well, if we started six. <laughs> but we'd have to we'd have to stick to the time frame. We would six, as you say. I'm saying come in at six on the twelfth uh, instead of seven and do this and then. Our date was the twelfth on a Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, because there's, there's, there's a holiday and a elections or elections. something going on to mess us up. I, 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 I <laughs> you didn't remember that? <laughs> no, I just I got to be two other places. So well, okay. I do have a split personality. You do. It's like You know what I mean? Is, is that a select board meeting at the same time? Yeah. Is it? <laughs> So why did, we, why did we say I don't know. Uh, you have the minutes from last meeting? Can I do. Remember? I do. Let me see what it said. Because the 10th, why didn't we do the t why didn't, when, We went through and everybody talked about when they were available. You left last meeting. Oh, he wasn't here for that. Yes. But September 12th, yeah, oh, we said motion right. to continue. We're here. Motion to continue them to the 12th of September. So we had that for the uh, Dollar General. But we won't have the room because the select board will be here. So I'm not sure why we did that, but that's what it is. And just for just for reference, Rachel, you and I moved it. <laughs> I don't know why the tenth. What's the tenth? Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. John it. had a holiday conflict. That's right. So I don't know how we can change that. Twelve. I think this point can we? Citizens of Deerfield have a conflict. Oh, well, you brought it up. 
But can we, we can we now change that 12th? Are we, are we locked into it, John? I didn't know about it until you brought it up. Did we post, did you this is, that is that changeable? to the 12th? Yeah. Yeah, we I did. I guess you're kind of locked there. Yeah. So you're yeah. kind of locked into that. Well, so 6 o'clock on the 12th? We can where? do that. We could also do the 19th if that's easier for everybody as well. That's Yom Kippur, by the way. Oh. Mm -hmm. Just saying. How about the 17th? Do that. Well, or, or get back to the uh, right to get back to the Mondays. Mondays, Mondays the are 17th. much better. It's just well, that we well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. If, if I mean, if we're if we've got a problem with here for for Dollar General. Well, if you have a public hearing schedule, the select board, we can change that date. Yeah, they'll have to. Okay. Well, then. Or there's we, multiple rooms where you can meet. Too. All right. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we do this? We on could meet in that room. Keep keep everything together on one day. That's that's better, I think. If we can do it from six to seven. Uh, well, What's that? I, I hate to add a night, but I just think. Well, that's what I'm going to give this more. It's just. Okay. just to, right. I just well, think those two anyways, that's that's what that's what's in the minutes. So. Right. I would go to the seventeenth. You guys could do the seventeenth. We could do Monday the seventeenth. We could do Monday the seventeenth. Yeah, so. And you. That gives. I, I, I know. I agree with you, Paul. But I'd rather. That's like, okay. Say, it's whatever it is. It is. Yeah. Nine that's seventeen. Four weeks. Time. That's a month. You know. Maybe. That's seventh. Yeah. That's yeah. Say. Seventeen. One, two, three, four weeks. And have time to get organized. Do you think you'd have time to have? Um, Notice Pat, of it. Pat, I believe you yeah. said yeah. was her name. That's so actually, by mean. by then we should have we've had lots of discussions. We've had a lot of your responses. Okay. We'll okay. Be able to. We can get that going. That would be great. Okay. 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 Yes, yeah, I was going to ask. Seven. We plan to get you a response package sometime between now and then. Yeah. So that would be the idea. Yeah. Okay. So I'll uh, <laughs> I'll do an in email introduction to, to Pat Smith and have her also follow up with some of these things. And if you could send it into Priscilla. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Can do. Can do, no problem. Um, all, right. all right, everybody. So um, we're going to continue this to September seventeenth, seven o'clock, and we hope at that point or before that point we'll have a lot of the information that's been discussed tonight. Um, if you have any new things, you can either write a letter or come. So we're going to continue the public hearing, so it's open to the public. We only close the public hearing when we feel like we have enough information that we don't need more information. Then we close the public hearing, and then we decide on this site plan and the special permit. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you for everybody's attendance and input and concerns for the town. Thank Who you. wants to move that we so, continue? Um, so. Okay, sorry. I'll move that we continue the um, discussion of this project. The public hearing. Public hearing. Yep. So I'll I'll see the 17th. Kim seconded. I'll second that. Kim seconded. Discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Five zero, zero. Five zero zero. And the applicant has. Yeah. We'll we'll so we'll get you something to sign just okay. to keep it all official. Okay. Obviously. Yeah. It's okay. No, but thank you guys for meeting tonight. Yeah. Appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Next up, any business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to posting this meeting? Anything? No. No. So all I know is that there is another uh, solar project that's. Uh, we just got the application today, I believe. So um, I think having these two meetings in September might be necessary because maybe that 17th is going to be, maybe we'll end up doing the second one at the same time. Okay. Where's that located? Where's that? That's one over by Thayer Street. Do they have that on the CD or do they? 100 the Railroad Yard. Yeah. Thank you very much. Here. All right. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate yeah. You, this is up at the Railroad Yard? I think it's in back between the railroad yard and the yeah. river, so I don't, I'm not sure there's going to be. I've read that in the green quarter. I'm not sure even any well, neighbors are going to come to this one. I, I, yeah, you can see it. See, this is River Road. Yeah. So it'll be right along. No, it's, yeah. Oh, it's here and here. Oh, yeah. it's two parts. Uh, this is where that salt storage was going to go. Yeah. Oh, so this is a lot quieter than that. Who, who's doing this one? Who's the... Yeah, let's see what it says on here. Have they been to the site board yet? John, do you know, do they have that on a CD? Uh, they're supposed to. If they do, just send it out. I you have that box? There's Is nothing there in it. Nope. There's no...
But is it in the... Their folder, and one of these things. I know, I get all these things. So, and then the other thing is, um, at some point, marijuana is going to come to us, too. I know. Right? Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're in for some long meetings. We should put in for a range. We're going to put in for some know. overtime. I know. <laughs> double, double our pay. Yeah, do triple it. Hey. Yeah. So, appreciate <laughs> willingness and... Give you 100 percent. There you go. You're so generous. It's 100 percent of nothing. Um, it's, uh, there's nothing still. Nothing. 100 nothings. Yeah. So yeah. There, there's several letters about Dollar General. Should we get them scanned and send out to us so yeah, we can read them yes. prior to the yeah, next meeting? So. Is that yeah. good? I think that's only fair. All right. Now, I, the other thing is a little. Is it is when the meeting's over, right? No. Yeah, we are still. Oh, I'm just. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else we want to talk about in, before we adjourn? Well, I, no. We can't talk about things after we adjourn. Well, that, that, <laughs> that, was, that was part of what I was getting at. <laughs> there was an article in the paper that I was just concerned. So maybe it's some... Oh, that what it said. That's that? Yeah. Yeah. We haven't adjourned yet, actually. Uh, we're, we're, we're still meeting. I was just going to let you know that there's going to be a new reporter probably the next time. Oh, man, where are you going? Yeah. Uh, What'd you do, get it all wrong or something? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Andy? I miss Andy. Oh, oh, oh and you guys don't move around too much. Jeez. All right. Okay. Uh, I've been doing Greenfield and Deerfield and You have been uh, I know, I do uh, see your your byline a lot of places. Yeah. <laughs> like you're gonna start calling it the Solomon Reporter. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, I'll probably be So do we are we done to move to adjourn now or not? Yeah. All right. Well, if we, yeah, if, we if, big, if we have big problems, you'll probably come back maybe. Oh, okay. I think I remember. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck up there. Yeah. Um, all right. Nothing else. Move to adjourn. Nine oh five. Are you moving, Paul? Move. Make the move. I'll move to adjourn. All, second. Second. Oh. All those in favor? Max. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, I'm going to write down Max as a second.